Father, we thank you tonight. I'm asking you, sir, I open my heart and I open my mind to hear words from heaven. By faith, we lay hold of revelation from heaven, insight, illumination, and concept from your word concerning faith for healing tonight. And we receive it. Think through my mind, please, Holy Spirit. I turn my self completely over to you. And I thank you beforehand for everything by grace. And I say it, you will think through my mind you will speak through my lips. You will do and manifest yourself tonight in gifts of healings, working of miracles, special faith, and other good and wonderful things that come down from you, Father, from above. And you will empower me and strengthen me to stand in the office wherein I am called and anointed. And to you be all of the glory and all of the praise and all of the honor for every deed that is done and every wonderful thing that takes place. Oh, we give glory to the matchless name of Jesus. Just praise him for a moment. Just praise and worship him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, dear Lord. Thank you for it, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of Proverbs. And let's look at chapter four. Now hold your place there and let's go to Romans chapter 10 once again. And let's read Romans 10, 17. We read that last night. Let's read it again, please. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, I want you to notice here that faith comes by hearing, but so does the hearing come from the Word of God. There's people that read the Bible all the time, never get anything out of it. In the very, very, very early days back, I hadn't been, I hadn't been saved but just, just a little while. And a friend of mine was uh, in the ministry, still is, wonderful man of God, close, close friend. And, um, <laughs> and he, he knew me back before I was born again and knew that I would sang and that kind of thing. And, and uh, <laughs> he invited me to come do a meeting with him in, in this little small church. And uh, he wanted me to sing with, for him every night. Well, hey, I'm just, I'm just fresh out of the honky tonks. <laughs> I'm not so far away from Texas. You don't know what a honky tonk is, do you? <laughs> Or maybe I just dated myself, <laughs> probably. But you can imagine. <laughs> I used to sing a t song called Honky Tonk Angel. 
And some of you old guys are sitting there nodding your head like that. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And I thought, well, yeah. And I told him, yeah, Charles, I mean, I'd be glad to, you know. And I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know over two or three songs that fit to sing in church. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I, I didn't know some because my mama, would, <laughs> she'd corner me into singing from time to time. And uh, so I'd sing in church and the anointing would come on me back there then. And I'd think, man, I don't know why I can't do this on Saturday. <laughs> Because I, I, knew, I knew if this was to happen to me last night, I'd have come out of there with a whole lot more money than I did last night. <laughs> hey Amen. All this going through my mind, you know, I'm a scripturally literate. I didn't know one end of the Bible from the other. I knew one verse of scripture, I think Jesus wept. That was about it. I <laughs> but, and, 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 we had a great meeting. I didn't know that those people, you could, I could have sung the same song every night. They'd have been happy with it, but I didn't know that. I thought it was like the world. You're supposed to sing a different one all the time, you know. <clears throat> Funny thing of it was, I got the songbook out to check out some songs and I found some, I found some guys' names in that song and that hymnal that I knew. <laughs> and they didn't have no business having a hymn in the songbook. I knew them rascals, <laughs> but see, they they were they, they were uh, soulish in their origin. They didn't have any word in them. The basic theme was, you know, broke, disgusted, and sad. Started traveling for Jesus, lost everything I had, and that's about it. <laughs> I sang I sang that one time. I, that, they were, I, I, I'm preaching in this church, and I've been there. Well, the, the meeting went on for 21 days and particularly the first two thirds of the meeting. Man, they sang some, they sang some old thing like Brother Hagin used to say, embalmed with unbelief, <laughs> just bad. <laughs> You'd be embarrassed to put that song up next to your Bible. <laughs> just spare me nothing. You bore for me on the cross if it'll make me closer to you. <laughs> Dear Lord, you get close enough, you get healed. <laughs> and, and this one guy, he, he'd sing that every time I'd come. <laughs> so, and I kept telling them about it. They didn't pay no attention to me. They just sit there and cry and go on. And old. So one night I, I was going to sing. <laughs> And I had a, had a good piano player. And so I just did it. Sick, sober, and sorry, broke, disgusted, and sad. Started traveling for Jesus, lost everything I had. Yo, yo, oh, yes, say man. Man, I ripped into that bunch. <laughs> Wasn't nothing anointed about none of it. I got in just as much trouble as they did before the night was over. Oh, I just plumb mad before the thing is over. Dear Lord, my goodness. <laughs> now, what's that have to do with the nice message? Absolutely nothing. I just thought maybe you'd like to know. We got the eighty thousand dollars. We have it. We got it. Yes, sir. The eighty thousand. Yes. Sir. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo, glory to God! Yes! Hallelujah! There's dancing in the heavenlies tonight. Glory to God! Hallelujah! Amen! <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So then, faith cometh by hearing and the hearing by the Word of God. Uh, the man that I was talking about, Charles Rogers, I, after that meeting, I was with him on a, 
a lunch meeting one time, just, just a little while after that. I still didn't know anything about the Word much, but I, I'm, I'm learning. I'm listening to him. And, and uh, we had lunch with a, uh, a man that was uh, part of the executive staff of a seminary. And he mentioned the fact that so-and-so was one of the professors in the seminary. And Charles said, you mean Dr. So-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so? Yeah. The same one that was it? Yeah. Isn't he a professed atheist? <laughs> he said, well, yeah, what difference does that make? He knows the Bible. He don't know the Bible. So see, that not only no faith was coming to him, but no hearing was coming to him. He just knows a lot of figures and facts and numbers and stuff like that. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That is the way faith comes. That is the way faith comes. It doesn't come through uh, trials and tribulations. No. Now, there are people that think it does, but it doesn't. No trial or tribulation will cause faith to come. If the faith isn't already there, or if the faith isn't activated in the trial or the tribulation, why does persecution come in the first place? For the word's sake. But you know most, there's just Christians by the millions that don't know that. They think persecution comes to make you stronger. Persec no, persecution doesn't come from God. Persecution, it is the devil. The sower sowed the word. That came from God. Amen. Satan cometh immediately to steal the word which was sown. Yes. And what? Persecution arises for the word's sake. Satan's trying to get rid of the word of God. He's trying to kill you. He's sure not trying to bless you. He can't bless you. Amen. So, Persecution doesn't cause faith. And actually, <laughs> well, you see, Brother Copeland, that came on me for God to teach me something. When are you going to learn it? <laughs> well, now, you know, I, I used to think that. That's the reason I didn't want to have nothing to do with church. I, was, I went over to get my teeth cleaned one day at the dentist and, and I'm just sitting there in the chair and there's a couple of the, the girls in there talking behind me, you know, I could hear them discussing the thing. And they're talking about church Sunday. And this one girl said, you know, she said, the, the Lord just blessed me Sunday. She said, and, and I, I, I just prayed and, and I asked the Lord to, to show me patience. She said, you better take that back. <laughs> I mean, she was serious. I thought, this ought to be interesting. <laughs> you better take that back. She said, why? Because there ain't no telling what God will do to you to teach you patience. There's no telling what you're going to come down with. I was just sitting there steaming in that chair. <laughs> I said, Lord, he said, no, you keep your mouth shut. Because see, it doesn't do any good to chime in on a deal like that. If the Lord tells you witness here, that's a different thing. But they, neither one of them were in any condition to be corrected. <laughs> she just said, see there, I tell you, you got, <laughs> I'm not going to persecute you, girl. Stay with me now. We're going somewhere with this. Praise God. <laughs> You're going to like it too. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes, thank you, Lord. Help me with that. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, faith does not come from praying for it because you can't get it by praying for it, even if you don't have it. If you're not born again, you can't get faith by praying for it. How does it come? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God, and you pray and invite Jesus into your heart, and the faith is there. For you were saved. How? By grace through faith. Amen. Amen. That's the way it works. Amen. Now, you get into a situation of tests and temptations and trials and so forth. It doesn't release faith. It tries your faith and releases the force of patience, which is not just putting up with stuff. No, the spiritual force, which is a fruit of the spirit, the spiritual force of patience is actually Holy Spirit endurance in times of tests and trials. And it always works with faith. It's faith and patience. The power twins. Hallelujah. But the faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, now, Brother Copeland, I, I, I don't know now. Uh, there, there's a contradiction here, really. Yes. Uh, if you'll just look over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you see, there's a contradiction there. Well, let's see if there is. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, you notice gifts is in italics. Concerning spiritual brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now, here's what we're talking about. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one, you need to underline that. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Not wisdom, it's the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. It's actually gifts of healings, plural. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. All these work that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Well, that can't be saving faith. That's a manifestation of what the Amplified calls it special faith. It is a manifestation of the faith of God a manifestation of the faith of the Holy Spirit added to your faith to accomplish what he wills in a situation. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. So it, it is said, and to one, the word of wisdom, to one, the word of knowledge, to one, faith or special faith. So if that were true, everybody couldn't get born again because it could only be just the, the ones that God singled out and gave them faith to get saved or faith to get healed. And there's, there's people that still believe that and, and believe that you can't get healed unless God gives you the gift of faith with which to get it. 
No, no, sweetheart. Healing belongs to you because we've been redeemed from that curse. Glory to God. Now, saving faith. This is what every born again believer has. And I want you to know it's a, it, it is the most powerful part of the, of the whole operation. Saving faith. That's the biggest miracle of all. I don't care if the gift of faith manifested in you. I've had it happen uh, a, a few times. Glory to God. I wish it happened all the time. Man. Oh, that's really something. Smith Wigglesworth described it like this. He said, I stretched my faith. The first time that, that the dead was raised in, under his hand, he said, I penetrated heaven with my own faith and nothing happened. But he said, then God, he said, God added his faith to my faith and my God, the man was raised from the dead. He said, you just stretch your faith as far as it'll go, knowing that Jesus has nine manifestations of power, glory to God, to add to your faith and put you right over the top, meeting the needs of people. Isn't that glorious? That's just fun, man. I was, I, I told you something about the name of Jesus. A blind woman was healed in the West Indies. Now that was not, that was not a manifestation of special faith or what the King James calls uh, a, the gift of faith. No, I'm just preaching the word on the, uh, the power and authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. And faith came in the people, in the name. Did you get it? Faith came, their faith rose up, their faith rose up in the power in the name of Jesus because they heard the word of God on it. And she came up there, I'm telling you, that woman was ready. I put my hands on her and she walked around there later as I told you, she said, Brother Copeland, thank you very much. I was blind, now I see, thank you. And I asked the pastor, I, I said, you, you know that woman? Yeah, he said, Brother Copeland, she's stone blind, man. Think of that. See, that, that faith that's on the inside of you, that comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God, I want you to know, my dear brother and sister, this is God's faith. This is the faith that Jesus used around the shores of Galilee, walking up and down that Jordan Valley. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. This is the same faith that he said to the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your faith made you whole. Amen. And he said to blind Bartimaeus and he said to other, other blind, do you believe I can do this? Yes. Be it done unto you as you have believed. Be it done unto you as you have believed. Your faith has made you whole. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it's on the inside of you. It's working right now. If you know Jesus as your Lord. If you don't, what are you waiting on? <laughs> Jesus! There's the faith. Now, it's not God's normal way of doing things to have a bright light come from heaven and knock you off your horse on the road to Damascus. That's not the way most people get saved. I haven't found any other thing in the New Testament or the rest of the Bible where that happened to anybody. So that was a manifestation that the Spirit of God executed himself because Saul of Tarsus did not have any faith. And he thought he did, but it wasn't in Jesus. He hated him. Well, what was happening here? Well, you see, God, yeah, God had a plan for this man. But folks, now listen to me. That plan had a blessing side and a curse side. 
And it wasn't up to Jesus. It was up to Saul. Cause his deal ended that day. His persecuting Jesus, Jesus took that person. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He didn't say my people, he said me. He came there to stop him that day, one way or the other. He's either going to get born again or he ain't going to get anything anymore. He's not getting up. It ended that day. <laughs> so he didn't put a stop to this deal. Why did he do that? Because the people were crying out. Man, I mean, he was wrecking havoc on the church and they were crying out. They were praying and Jesus was moving. And you're seeing a little bit, uh, one, one of the things that obviously happened. And what happened then? Lord, who are you? Faith came. But think about what happened just a short time later. And this fellow is just a disciple, but Jesus appeared to him and said, I, I, I want you to go down there and I want you to lay hands on this fellow named Saul. And he said, uh, Lord, I <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he said, I want you to go down there and lay hands on him and, and, and where he'd get his eyesight back and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And so he did. But faith is working. Faith is working. Yep. Amen. So he goes down there and tells Saul, the Lord appeared to me and told me to come lay hands on you. Brother Saul. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, faith faith depends on the Word. Man, Jesus said, does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Human people have the spiritual capacity to hear every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We're created in His likeness and image. Glory to God. And when you hear it, faith comes and expands your capacity to hear more. That was right hot off of the press. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's telling us that the spirit man Food is the Word. The Word of God is spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Okay? My words are spirit and they are life. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, how then do you get faith for healing? Go to Proverbs chapter four. Now, remember Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. Verse 20, my son, attend to my words. Put my word first place. Attend to it. Put it first in your life. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Now, here we are again. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. But you have to incline your ear to hear it for you to hear it. 
Jesus said, they have closed their ears and they have closed their eyes. Well, if you can close them on purpose, you can open them on Amen. purpose. Amen. Amen. And he said, he that has ears to hear, yes. let him hear. Yes. Hear what? Words of faith. Yes. Amen. Say, <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Thank you, Lord. Uh, hold your place there. We're going to come right back to that. But I want you to look at the eighth chapter of the book of Luke. Luke chapter eight, and Jesus is preaching concerning the sower sows the word. And it came to pass afterward, he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the 12 were with him and not just the 12 now, and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. These people had become part of his ministry and they were his partners. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to notice now, he's preaching on the sower sowing the word. Verse eight, other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried. Jesus was and is a preacher. He taught in their synagogues, he preached in their villages, and he healed the people. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach. Preach the gospel to the poor, preach the deliverance to the captive, to preach recovery of sight to the blind. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is the great Jubilee, which we're in right now. Amen. Amen. So I want you to notice now, get the picture of this. This is the reason all of us other preachers do the same thing. When he had said these things, he cried. He's a loud preacher. The anointing of God came on him and he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. All you had to do was to choose to hear it and faith had come. That's a shouting spot right there in case you wanted that. Can you see it? And he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Hear what? Oh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> and his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? And he said, now not just to the 12, but to those partners that were there. They were going with him and testifying to their deliverances and their miracles. And they were involved financially in his ministry, going from village to village to village to village with him. And he's talking to them and he said unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? They had ears to hear. Yes. They were involved. Amen. 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 They had ears to hear. And they understood what he was talking about when nobody else could get it. I don't know what that does for you. That sends a thrill through me, brother. I'm telling you. Why? Faith came. Faith came. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now back to Proverbs 4, because it's right here. My son, attend to my words. 
put that first. You come up and say, Brother Copeland, I need you to go to town with me. No, I can't. I have to attend to this first. I have an appointment. That doesn't mean I'm being ugly to you. I've just got a priority here. Well, where is the Word of God in your priorities? If it's anywhere but first place, you're suffering. If you're getting all your news from the news media, you are not, you're uninformed, grossly uninformed. In the first place, they don't know anything until after it happens. In the second place, they'll lie about it. But you'll continue in the Word of God. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. 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 And all you had to do was decide to hear. Because it's for anybody that'll receive it. Anybody that'll open your ears. Now, when you first open them, it may take a little while. Because you have to, you know, your ears need a good cleaning. <laughs> Amen. You have to incline your ear. In other words, what I hear, when I get it from the Word of God, it's going to be right. I don't care how crazy it looks to me. Because you're the one that's crazy, not the Bible. <laughs> you and me are the ones that were wrong, not the Word. Amen. And so the, the more we make the decision... I'm coming to that service tonight and I'm, I'm focusing in. I'm, I'm, I'm putting the, I'm inclining my ear to the word of God and whatever the spirit of God tells me to do tonight, I'm going to do it. And I tell you right now, whatever goes on, I'm receiving. Amen. I'm taking what belongs to me in the things of God. My ears are open. My heart's open. I have ears to hear. I take it. I have ears to hear. Glory to God. And when you read your chapter every day, you go before you, I open my ear, Lord. I'm listening. Guide me, lead me, talk to me, talk to me. Yes. Well, do you expect him to talk to you? Yes. Well, then shut up and listen. <laughs> Rufus Mosley said he was lying in the floor praying and crying out to God because the meeting wasn't going well. And he was wondering, what can we do to be more successful in this meeting? It looked like it's just not going to work in this city. And he's crying out to God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And finally he stopped and he said, wait a minute. Here lies a fool that doesn't know anything doing all the talking to somebody that knows everything. <laughs> So he shut up and listened. And of course, the Lord told him what to do and the meeting was a success. <laughs> Amen. I've experienced that my own stupid self. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> Incline your ear to my sayings. Now listen, don't let them depart from your eyes. Put your eyes on the word. Don't do everything you do with just listening. Amen. This means eyes to see. You don't see with your eyes. You see, first of all, with your brain, and your brain transfers that to your mind, and you see with your mind. Your eyes are just camera lenses. Right. And the way you measure it, it will be measured to you. Amen. So you have to say, Lord, I'm opening my eyes to you. I yield to you and to the Spirit of God within me. Open my eyes to see here. I know faith cometh by hearing, and the hearing comes by the Word of God. But so does the seeing. Jesus said, he that will open his eyes and his ears, he that will hear the word of the kingdom, he that will see the word of the kingdom, he that will understand the word of the kingdom with his heart and be converted or change the way he sees, change the way he hears and change the way he talks and thinks. I will, anytime he does that, I will heal him. That's right. Amen. Amen. He didn't say I could. He said, I will. Anytime. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, this isn't any time. Glory to God. Now then, I'm right down the place where I'm going to close this. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life. My words are spirit and they're life. Unto those that find them. 
What is a found word of life? Uh, when you're, you're on purpose, you've made a decision. What I see here, what you show me, I'm ready to act on it. I'm, the, I'm a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. And this becomes the perfect law of liberty, James said, to the doer of the word. I've made up my mind and my heart. What I see in the word, I'm going to do it. I'm going to let it change the way I think, talk, and act. I'm, 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 the word is mine, and I'm, I've made this decision. Now it begins to open up to you. You begin to see things and understand things, and you begin to have understanding that God gave you. And when you have the eyes of your spirit, Spirit begin to see things. That's when seeing becomes believing. You see something with your natural eye, you know, the natural world says, well, you know, seeing is believing. No, 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 no. Believing is seeing. Amen. We're not, the, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Amen. But when you get revelation, you begin to see into the spirit realm and that'll bring faith. Yeah. What's happening? Faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it begins to activate what you're hearing. You're hearing the word on healing. It begins to work on the inside of you and, and your faith is beginning to make you whole. It'll begin to change your physical being. It'll begin to change the things that are not functioning right, particularly if you'll believe them in your heart and say them with your mouth. Right. And don't, don't contaminate your spirit Don't contaminate your faith with fear. And if you're feeding on other stuff at the same time and fear comes, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. They came and told Jairus, your daughter's dead. Jesus turned around and said, stop the fear. Believe only, believe only and she will be made whole. Hmm? Glory to God. Father, thank you for this. And now notice this. For these words are life to those that find them and health. The Hebrew word is medicine to all of their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the forces of life. That's where your faith is alive. That, that's where the power of righteousness is. Hallelujah. Put away from you a disobedient mouth and perverse lips put far from you. Let your eyes look right on and let your eye looks look straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. Don't turn from the right hand to the left and remove your foot from evil. Praise God. You'll come out of there healed. You'll come out ministering healing to other people. Now turn with me quickly to the book of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28. <clears throat> the first 15 verses, the first 14 verses, actually, yeah, first 14 verses are the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of God. Now, I want you to notice how this is translated it shall come to pass if you hearken diligently into the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do his commandments, which I command thee this day, <clears throat> that the Lord God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you'll hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. See, God had already blessed All you had to do was do what he said and it come on you. He didn't have to put it on you. It was there in that covenant. Now go to the 15th verse 
And notice how this is translated. But it'll come to pass if you'll not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command this day, all these curses shall come on you and overtake you. You get out from under the protection of that covenant by being disobedient to it and you just walk head on into the curse. The curse didn't have to come from anywhere. It was already there. Are you listening to me? It's here tonight. Yeah, it's just waiting on you. All you have to do is decide to do something stupid. And God won't commission it. But you, you got a will of your own. You can do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And he'll tell you. But if you're just bullheaded and you're just going to go ahead and do it anyway, boy, the devil's out there waiting on you. Yes. I mean, he's out there waiting on you. Yeah. God doesn't have to make you sick. You'll get there on your own. That's right. <laughs> Besides that, he couldn't make you sick. How's God going to make you sick? Is he going is he to is he, is he call you sick? No, he sent his word and it healed him. Is he going to put it on you with his hands? No, he lays his hands on you and you get, you get healed. He doesn't have any sickness. He doesn't have any. All sickness is under the curse. And I'm going to prove it to you right from the scripture right now. There are those that believe that God is making people sick. That's a lie from hell. It had never been true. Well, I don't know whether it's God's will to heal me or not. Spend some time in the Word. Just follow the ministry of Jesus. He never turned anybody down. Everybody that came to Him, He healed them all. The only ones that didn't get it were the ones that, that didn't believe what He preached in His own hometown. Amen. Now listen how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Sickness is under the curse. It was the pu curse punishment for breaking the law. The first five books of the Bible called the law, the Pentateuch. Amen. Amen where that covenant, the blessing and the law is written. Jesus said, I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Amen. So that Jesus, the will of God in action, the will of God for all men for all time. You remember the leper that came up to him and said, uh, sir, I know you can. If you will, you make me well. He believed, he, he, had, he had faith in the fact that he could do it. Obviously he had heard that he could. So that had generated faith, but he hadn't heard whether he would or not. He didn't know who was getting and who wasn't. Now think about it a minute. He, he was not allowed to associate with the people that were getting it. He wasn't able to get out there in those meetings where Jesus was yeah. preaching. Right. Now, and he fell down at Jesus' feet. He, he, he fell out on the ground in front of him. And look what it said. It said, Jesus touched him. Now what, come on now. I mean, here's this man with this stinking, nasty filthy, running, pus filled pox all over him. So filthy and nasty with clothes that no telling how long it had been since he'd been clean. Nobody wants anything to do with him. No wonder he said, I know you can. Yeah. Me? Something like me? What moved Jesus? Compassion. Oh. And he touched him. Do you know what that meant? That meant 
that he had to get down here on the ground because that's where the man was and get him by the face and say, I will. I will. Nobody had touched this man in a long, long time. But compassion. And it was enough when Jesus said, I will. And the leprosy departed. He touched him. Be clean. And it left there was enough faith in those words for the man to take his healing. Amen. And he got up well. Hallelujah. What a thrill. Absolute what a thrill. What a thrill, what a thrill. Now, if we look at the, the um, well, starting with the, uh, we started with the 15th verse. Now, look at that 22nd verse. The Lord shall smite you with a consumption. Well, now, how could that be? He, he doesn't have any consumption. With fever, with inflammation, extreme burning, the sword with blasting, mildew, and pursue you till you perish. Well, we just got through seeing the proper translation of that. Now, let me read you a quote from... Dr. Robert Young, the author of Young's Analytical Concordance. Now, he wrote a book called Hints to Bible Interpretation. It's out of print. I'm searching for one. I'm believing God for one. And, and, and anybody that comes up with one, whoa, let me know. Mm. Now, for, they used to have the outline of the book, not the book, but the outline in front of the Young's Concordance. And finally, the editors took that out. But the quotes are not in there. It was just an outline, and you can, that's all you can get if you Google it. You just get the outline. The book, in the book, Dr. Young said, the words put and brought are from the same Hebrew word. They are used in the permissive sense and not in the causative sense. At the time the King James Bible was translated, and there's a lot of translations that came off the King James and particularly out of the Greek from which the King James was translated. Hebrew was a dead language. And they didn't realize that it had a permissive verb. Now, those, those, those first verses are translated accordingly. And if you follow that down through there, if you refuse to hearken, what's going to happen? The consumption's going to come on you. Inflammation's going to come on you. Amen. And God has to permit it. Let's look at Isaiah 45. I know I'm taking some time here, but I'm building your faith with the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 45. And I want you to notice the seventh verse. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. God doesn't create evil. He's not the author of darkness. Amen? But now, Dr. Young uses this as an example in his book, which simply says, I make peace and I allow evil. Well, of course he does. 
I mean, you got a free will. You can do, anybody under that covenant could do whatever they will to do. But if they did, that curse come on you. All right. Look at this one. Let's turn to, uh, oh, this, this is a good one. Exodus 15. Exodus 15, 6. Are you learning anything tonight? Yes. Now, this is not the only way. This is not the only way to prove this. You, you can go all, what happened? What happened when God delivered Israel out of Egypt? When the scripture said he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that when you get into the scripture concerning that, he allowed his heart to continue to harden. He didn't do anything to stop it. He couldn't. The king had his own will going. Amen. And what happened? Did God kill the firstborn? No, the destroyer did. The destroyer did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an angel from God. No. It was a destroying. It was a devil. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. God had him and he wouldn't let him cross the line. Hmm? Right. And check it out for yourself. Don't, don't, don't make me do all your studying for you. Amen. Amen. And you can check out, uh, you can check out references like that all the way, particularly through the old covenant. There are references to it that'll go back and reference to what took place here in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy and point out the fact that the destroyer did it. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. What happened to Job? Well, you know, God, no, God, the devil tried to get God to do it and God refused to do it. Well, God turned him over to the devil. I, I know you've never read Job. <laughs> well, you know, after all, I'm just like poor old Job. Well, you need to get double then. Everything. No, the first thing God said to Satan was behold. That's not like, behold. <laughs> it's not one of them Christmas card words, you understand? It means, look, the devil ain't as big a deal as, he, as most people have been brainwashed to think he is. He don't know everything. And God said, look, he is in your power. Job did it. He's the one that did it. And then in a way, God's going to lie or cover for you. I can see you real thrilled over this. <laughs> there was only one sin involved in the whole book of Job. One. The accuser accused Job to God's face. You touch him and he'll curse you to your face. That was the only sin that he was accused of. And that's the only one. Now, all the other things, man, he made some really goofed up decisions and bad decisions and all that. But none of that was held against him because that's not what the devil accused him of. He accused him of cursing God to his face. And his wife tried to get him to do it. And he, Job had it on his mind. He was afraid his children were doing it. Well, that's the only way the devil can get you to do that is get you to thinking about it, get you to worrying about it, get your wife to worry. She'll tell you to curse God and die. She's one to open the door for the devil to kill her children. Well, he could have repented before he got to the last chapter. Because when he repented, God turned his captivity. Yeah. It wasn't God that was doing it. It was the devil that had him captive. For nine months to a year, he was having a hard time. But brother, when it was over, it was over. And God doubled everything he had and the devil was done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. 
Yes, yes, yes. Exodus. Okay. Chapter 15. And look at the 26th verse. 15, 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put, you remember the word that Dr. Young talked about, the word put? I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought. Now, put and brought are the same Hebrew words upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that heals you. Now, let me read again what Dr. Young said. The words put and brought are from the same word. They're used in the permissive sense and not in the causative sense. I will allow none of these diseases to come on you that I had to allow to come on the Egyptians. He didn't put them on anybody. Hallelujah. Well, let's hit the bottom line here. And then I've got an instruction from the Lord. 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. I'm coming to one verse. Now you read, you need to read all of these 22, 27 through 29, 35. Let's look at verse 61. Deuteronomy 28, 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of the law, them will the Lord bring upon you. No, that's, that's, that's put and brought. The Lord will allow to come on you until you're destroyed or until you repent. Hallelujah. Now, oh, glory to God. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 3. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, I tell you, it gets a thrill in God to turn the pages. Glory to God. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are redeemed from sickness. We are redeemed from spiritual death. We are redeemed from poverty. Glory to God. It's shouting time in the kingdom of God. I know I've been long with you tonight, but I, I have to finish my assignment. And I'm right there right now. I'm going to help you with something. Hallelujah. Second Samuel 19. I was over the last several years it seemed like to me, I, 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 kept, I, I kept seeing this, and it seemed like I was at a, a, a river crossing of some kind in, in my life. And, and there was a bridge there, but, and, and, and I'm, you know, this coming December, I'll be four score. Amen. Three score and 10 or four score, but you know, a strength, which is 70 or 80. And, um, and several years ago during healing school, Gloria was preaching. She, and she was talking about it from the 91st Psalm and from the 90th Psalm. In Genesis 6, 3, the days of man shall be 120 years. Every scripture you see, it says he'll lengthen your days 
with long life, he'll satisfy you, is based on Genesis 6, 3 of 120 years. That's what he's talking about. Well, I'm sitting back there and the Lord said to me, he said, that's just as much my word as by my stripes, you were healed. I said, it is, isn't it? He said, yeah, it's not optional. Of course he said, you don't have to accept it, but it's there for your benefit. Just like by his stripes, you were healed. Okay. And he kept dealing with me about this, kept talking to me about it. And he kept talking to me about it, kept talking to me about it. And then he said, when hands were laid on you, he was talking about when Oral Roberts laid his hands on me in December, in uh, November of 1966, I enrolled in school in January 67. Who are you? And the anointing of this ministry was imparted into me. And that's the reason that I realized later that he's my spiritual father. I mean, he had the anointing that when he laid hands on me, literally gave birth to this, this ministry. So he, the Lord said, were you as anointed when you were 30? I, I, I got under Brother Hagin's ministry and Brother Hagin was a, the father of, uh, uh, of faith in me. He just fathered a life of faith in me. He said, and, and the anointing of God began to activate and, it, it, and we were getting results. When I was 30, 31 years old and the ministry was growing rapidly and all that. People were getting healed, a lot of people getting saved and everything. He said, were you as anointed when you were 30 as you were when you were 40? I said, well, no. He said, it's the same anointing. I said, yes, sir, but it's growing. My faith is growing. I'm learning. I still am. I'm the hungriest man for God you ever met in your life. And I, he said, were you as anointed when you were 40 as you were when you were 50? I said, well, of course not. He said, what about when you were 60? I said, no, it, it, it's growing. And I can see what his, his pattern here. I can see where he's going. He said, Kenneth, I do not have the anointings that I have made available. He said, the anointings that come between 90 and 100, the anointings that come at 110. Hallelujah. He said, I don't have them in the earth because my people have not decided by faith to live this long. Praise oh. God. And he said, I need them. And should you accept it, I'm calling you to do it. Well, I'm old enough to die right now. <laughs> but I haven't finished my course. I'm not leaving here till I finish my course. I don't, I don't, I don't care what, what the age thing is. If I finish my course before I get to 120, you don't kid yourself. I'm gone so fast you wouldn't even <laughs> make your head swim. I'm not hanging around this place. But I've got my heart set and I laid hold of that and it has been working with me and working with me and teaching me with that. Now, I'm going to lay that as the base and I want you to listen to this. We're going to deal with this some more tomorrow too. Israel is in a civil war. David is no longer king. Absalom has made a mess of things. And uh, during the time that he and his troops 
hundreds of men and, and their families. During the time they were in exile, in the 19th chapter, verse 31, David is headed back to Jerusalem and he's at the Jordan River. Verse 31, Barzillai, the the Gil, they came from um, Gilead, the Gileadite, came down from Rojalim and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now, Barzillai was a very aged man, even four score years old. In fact, it was his 80th birthday. He provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great, a very wealthy man. So he supported the king financially and all of his army. And now the king is headed back to Jerusalem. And he said to Barzillai, come thou over with me and I'll feed you you with me in Jerusalem. You come go with me. You helped me. You took care of me. You, you used your substance to, to sustain me and our families and all that's ours. <coughs> now I'm going back on the throne. You come go to Jerusalem with me. It's my turn. And how many of you know David was a powerful king and he knew how to make covenant with someone. Mm -hmm. He was very, very capable financially before God because God would bless him. Now listen, he said, you come go over this Jordan with me and you come go to Jerusalem with me. I'll take care of you. You took care of me, I'll take care of you. Can you hear a covenant in this? Now listen to what Barzillai said. Barzillai, verse 34, said unto the king, how long ha have I to live that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? I am this day four score years old. Can I discern between good and evil? His, his, his thinking's clouded. Can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? He'd lost his taste. He, 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 he couldn't taste and enjoy his food. Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? So he's lost his hearing. Wherefore then should your servant be yet a burden unto my Lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. Why should the king recompense it, me with such a reward? Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back again that I may die in my own city and be buried by the grave of my father and my mother. I don't want to go. I'm too old. I'm old enough to die. I'm 80. My birthday's today. I can't hear nothing. I can't see nothing. I can't taste nothing. <laughs> the man needs healing but he don't want to be healed. He wants to die. He's tired. He's a very wealthy man. Obviously the guy worked hard all of his life. He's done with it here. I'm sitting out on my deck and I'm reading this and all of a sudden the presence of the Lord came around me. And he said, Kenneth, I am the king and I'm headed to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Oh. Wow. Yes, sir. Can you see it? He said, I'm headed to Jerusalem. Will you come over the Jordan yes, with me, boy? Now you're old enough to die. Die if you want to. I'll bless you if you want to do it. You want to live another 10, 12 years? In fact, just about that same time, 
a young man that I have a lot of confidence in it was in the Word, and the Lord told him to send me the message. He said, like the prophet told, who was it, Hezekiah? 15 more years. He said, you tell Kenneth, and he called me and told me, and it was just right at this time. He said, you tell Kenneth if he wants it, I'll give him 15 more years. Well, that's, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> 94. So here he's giving me another choice. You go ahead and live to be 94, you're, you're healed. Well, ain't nothing wrong with me. There are a few issues here and there that faith is working on right now as we speak. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Now listen, it's my choice. I turned him down. I couldn't have done it without the grace of God. But see, the faith came from meditating on that scripture in Genesis 6, 3. Faith has been working in me on that for several years. There was a time I would have jumped at 94. There was a time I'd been glad to get out of here at 80. You get tired. The devil do anything he can to make you quit. Talk you into quit. But this ain't no time to quit, dear God. Not about to quit. I ain't got time to quit. I said, no, sir. I appreciate it, but I believe I'm going on to Jerusalem. Man, when I did, I'm telling you, the anointing of God came on me and the devil jumped up and attacked me in my body with everything he could put together. And he hit me, but he didn't hit me good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm speaking the word of faith tonight for every person that's over 70 that's having trouble in your physical body. And I'm speaking the word of God to you if you will make the decision, I could see it. I mean, the, the Spirit of God just came all over my deck out there where I was praising God. I could see, I'd been seeing that bridge. I didn't have a vision or anything. It's just, it's just in, the, in, the, in my mind's eye of my spirit, my faith had come up and it would seem like that I, I'm just standing there looking at that river. I didn't consider it being the River Jordan. I just considered it the rest of my life that I have here on, on this earth. I really hadn't spent that much time analyzing it or anything. Yeah. And then I came across this thing at the Jordan River in Brasilia and on his 80th birthday. <laughs> and the king said, come on, go with me. I'll take care of you. I could hear Jesus saying, come on, come on across this Jordan. I'll heal your taste. I'll heal your eyes. I'll heal your ears. Come on, old man. Get up from there and go to Jerusalem with me. I'm covenanting with you. I'll take care of you, man. Come on. Get up from there, girl. Come on. Let's go. Let's go to Jerusalem with the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus the King is here tonight. Jesus the Healer is here tonight. Jesus the Savior is here right now. And he's saving and he's healing and he's baptizing in the Holy Ghost and it's happening right now and it's happening all over this entire television audience. It's happening on, on shortwave radio going all over the world. Glory to God right now. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Everybody 70 or over, stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I said. In the name of Jesus, 
I speak in behalf of the king. Be strong. Be blessed. Be healed. I'm going to lay hands on Billy and Gloria. And when I touch them in the name of Jesus, you release your faith. Whoa, oh, 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 yeah. I see bones are straightening up. I see nerves coming back alive. I see ears opening up. I see eyesight coming back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. One of my, one of my dearest friends, while he was on this earth at 107, glory to God, he, he told his daughter, he said, um, he, 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 he praised God all night long. She couldn't get him to go to bed. He just kept praising God and shouting. He got up next morning, didn't sleep a wink. And he said, right, let's go to church this morning. Glory to God. She said, now, daddy, now you can't go over and preach this morning. You get all excited. And no, he said, I'm going to church. She said, well, I'm not going to let you preach. He said, let's go to church. <laughs> so they went to church. And sure enough, they asked him to preach. And he jumped up there on that platform, went to preaching, glory to God. And he preached, 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 kind of like me tonight. You just couldn't hush, just preached, and he preached, and he preached, and he preached, and he got home, and he couldn't quit preaching, and he preached to his family, and he just couldn't quit preaching. And that night he said goodbye, and he's gone. <laughs> will be preaching the Word of God when I depart. You hear me say it? I will be preaching the Word of God when I depart. And I'm believing it's going to be on my 120th birthday. Yeah, Gloria said, I'll be listening. <laughs> now, when I, touch, when I touch these girls, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the name of Jesus. You take it. I take it. I receive Father, I take the we power. act on the days of man shall be 120 years. Okay. We take that. We, take we act on that and we do so in order to give you the tools that you need in this earth, the anointings that are necessary between 80 and 90, 90 and 100, 100 and 110, and 110 and 120. Yes, yes. We take it now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. We take it. We take it. Oh, I'm telling you, stomachs are being healed. Lungs are being healed. Youth is being renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, some of you young kids better take a hold of this because we're going to run off and leave you. I wish I'd have had sense enough to do this when I was 30. Amen. Hallelujah. I am some kind of thrilled of it. Oh yeah, blood disease is being healed. Glory to God. Arthritis disappearing right now. Bone disease is disappearing right now. Arteries are being cleared right now. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the dancing aisles are open. Hallelujah. Whoa, hallelujah. Glory to God. Get on out there and dance before the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, my king. Thank you, my king. Thank you, my king. I'm going to Jerusalem with you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You'll take care of my eyes. You'll take care of my ears. You'll take care of my taste. You'll take care of my brain. Hallelujah. You'll take care of my heart, all of my organs, my liver, and all that good stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. I asked the Lord the other day, I said, you, you want me to, you want me to uh, lay my flying down? He said, not until I tell you. I train two, sometimes three times a year. Amen. And let them kids. <laughs> Just let them wonder. <laughs> and when does that old man fall down? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Someone's jaw is being reset. Amen. You've been having trouble with your bike or with your jaw? Praise God. There's someone online right now that, that has had a, a cracked hip and that hip is not only healed, but your bone density is back. Go back and get another checkup. Your bone density is back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What about it? Did you get anything tonight? Yes. Come on, give the Lord a praise and a thanksgiving. Yeah, I was just, I was on my way. I'm turning around to point at you. Come on, Keith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm good where I can open this. I have a charge from the Lord to those who are standing just a few moments ago. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It's Acts, the 20th chapter. If you're serious about this, God is serious about sustaining you. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Yes, He is. The Bible says, talking about uh, when they were dying too young in the wilderness, it said uh, three score and ten, seventy, and if by strength, eighty. It takes strength to make it from seventy to eighty. You had to be a little stronger than the rest of the crowd. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were dying at 70. Some of them made it to 80. Well, if you're going to make it past 80, you're going to have more strength to make it from 80 to 90, more strength to make it from 90 to 100, 100 110, 120. And Nehemiah says, don't be sorry, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> and I told you what the Lord had ministered to me was the joy of the Lord. Yes, sir. That was it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The way to get there, through any challenges, through any attacks, is the strength of God coming up out of your spirit into your body. And there's nothing that the strength of God can't compensate for in your body. Enough strength of God will overcome any infection, any weakness, any deformity, any failure, any failure, any failure. Joy is a force, a spiritual force. Yes. It is the quickening yes. of the spirit of life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Notice what, the, what Paul said. He said, verse 24, uh, Acts 20, 24. He said, none of these things move me. Oh, come on, say, none of these things. None of these things move, move me. me. 
<laughs> you got to get that way. Not what's going on in the world, not what's going on in the country, not what's going on in your family, not what's going on in your body. None of these things move me. Because if they move you, it'll cause you to cut off your own strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read. None of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. Our life is not our own. That's right. We've been bought with a price. My life, your life is not our own. We should only leave here when we and the Lord get good and ready for us to go. Not with some accident, not with some disease. The devil should have no say in our departure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. None. Somebody say, I'm going. I'm going. When the Lord and me. When the Lord and me. Are good and ready. Are good and ready. And not before. And not before. Not before. Not before. But notice what he said. Notice what he said. That I might finish my, my course, course with, with joy. joy. Hallelujah. And the ministry. Hallelujah. This is how we get from 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100, 100 to 110, 110 to 120. It takes strength. We will be able to finish our course with joy. The joy is our strength. But the charge from the Lord is this. If you're serious about this, any of us, especially those who are just standing, but all of us, I mean, if the Lord tarries, mm -hmm. uh, if you're 20, it won't be long till you're 70. That's right. It's going to come and go so quick. You'll be out of here soon enough as it is. If you made it past 100 to 120, it's going to come so quick, so quick, so quick. The enemy is continually trying to rob us, steal our days. And the subtle ways that he does it is through getting you to yield to thinking of darkness, of sadness, of grief, of sorrow. If you live to 120, you're going to go to a lot of funerals. That's right. Yep. There you're you going to see a lot of your family and a lot of your friends pass on. And if you harbor some of that grief, you're going to see a lot of things. Not all of it's going to be good. If you can't cast the care of that over on the Lord and let the joy of the Lord continually come up in you, you will not have the strength to continue to go 80, 90, 100. The only way we finish our course is with the strength of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. We got to make up our mind every day, every day it will be attacked. You'll hear something on the news that makes you mad. Yeah. And while you're mad, you're not joyful. If you're mad, you're not joyful. It'll attack your body. If you're aggravated, you're not joyful. If you're frustrated, you're not joyful. If you're upset because somebody didn't do something for you, you're not joyful. It is so subtle. It is so insidious. But if you get yourself that you've gone for an hour or two and haven't laughed. <laughs> if you've gone for a day or two and you didn't dance. Come on, are you listening? If you've gone for days and you didn't shout, you didn't celebrate, you didn't praise the Lord. You're not gonna make then you are not as strong as you need to be to overcome it all and finish your course. Amen. Oh, it's a good word. Glory you got to God. make up your mind. Glory to God. Nothing Glory is to God. taking my joy. No, nothing. 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 Nothing, 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 nothing. is taking my joy. 
nothing, 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 nothing is taking my joy. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice.